pigs. Black Sabbath's War Pigs. Uh, Primus's Pork Soda. My favorite all-time sandwich is a pulled pork sandwich. Kermit, you could have done so much better. Miss Piggy's a bitch. And in horror films, a pig head makes a badass mask. film review for you guys. Um, this one is a brand new 2012 slasher film called Madison County. Uh, this was directed by Eric England. Let's get right to the plot here. Um, kind of a derivative plot, of course, with it being a throwback type slasher film. The uh, story revolves around James. He's a young college student and he's uh, in the middle of writing a pretty big paper for one of his courses. Um, so he He's running on this killer from the titular Madison County down in Arkansas, and he's been corresponding with an author um, named David Randall, who's writing a book, who has written a book called *Devil in the Woods* about this this killer who serial killer who's um, supposedly had killed over 30 people over a three decade span um, years back. The thing about it is, the book is about how. The town supposedly is covering up these murders. He was never tried. He was never found. Um, there's questions if this person even exists, if it's a myth, story, whatever. So uh, James is in the middle of doing this report on this, and he decides to go travel down there, um, take the 12, 13-hour drive to uh, go down to Madison County, uh, finally meet David Randall, get some more information, talk to the locals, to uh, further uh, a good grade on this big report. So James gets his, um, his friend Kyle to go with him, um, who also goes is Kyle's girlfriend Brooke, um, her brother Will, and Brooke's friend Jenna. So they all travel in the SUV, they go down there, and on the way down we get to learn one of the characters a bit, and we realize that uh, you know Will only goes along, be, Will doesn't want to go along, he's uh, Brooke's brother, and he's agitated right from the start that he has to go, and he's basically kind of going on himself, but also going because his father wanted him to, because he's, he's very protective of his sister Brooke, um, which is kind of strange because, you know, she's kind of at the age where you just got to kind of let things go. Although, I'm sure I'll be the same way with uh, Lil Hebbinger as she gets older. But, nonetheless, he decides to go along, kind of look over Brooke. And, um, what he doesn't know is that she is dating Kyle, who Will definitely does not like. It. And I think deservedly so, because Kyle's kind of, kind of a, I don't know, he's kind of a nerd, but he's, he's just kind of like, probably definitely the most annoying character of the group. So they get down there, he eventually course finds out that they're dating and they had some drama along the way. Um, they get there and they meet up with the locals in a classic, you know, the local dive bar restaurant scene, uh, cafe, and they meet a lot of the locals who are of course um, are very quiet. Uh, they meet up with uh, the manager of the, the establishment, this um, delightful old, old woman. They try to get information from her where David Randall lives and, and she's basically saying that he, he left, um, he doesn't live there anymore. James questions that because he's been corresponding with him, you know, so they call it bullshit. Um, she does give him the address that he used, supposedly used to live, and uh, they uh, kind of pissed off, they drive away, they have a little mishap with another one of the locals who's basically ready to fight them. So just a bad reception there. They go to the house, David Randall's not there. Um, he had set up this meeting, James and David Randall, to meet and discuss, and he's obviously bewildered why he isn't there. The reason why they don't speak on uh, cell phone terms is because David Randall does not have a cell phone. Um, apparently everyone in the South um, just relies on you know, regular mail and uh, that's it. So they're old school, right? So uh, they wait there for him. Of course they begin snooping around, splitting up of course, and uh, eventually they, they begin to learn uh, more things from other people about kind of the, the myth or the, the story of, of Damien Yule, who is the, the, the name of a, the infamous killer that they speak of. And um, as they split up, they of course begin to be picked off one by one. Uh, that's basically the plot. 
Uh, total throwback slash, which we've seen a lot of in the last couple of years, sometimes pulled off successfully. Uh, like a couple of years ago, um, the the film Carver, um, Psycho Holocaust, um, you know, many other ones, Murder Loves Killers too, which I've, I've brought up many times. Uh, you know, Undertow is another one. Um, of course, recently other films like uh, on a little bit more bigger budget, Hatchet. You have one, uh, another one last year called If a Tree Falls, I think was, was really good. Um, not a big fan of Hatchet. But, uh, so there's been many of these, quote, throwback slashers. And this is another one. It's one of those films, uh, right after you watch it, I think you, you just immediately start to imagine the, what critics are going to have to say about it. Some of their critiques of the film. And I think some of them are understandable. Uh, the two main big ones is, number one, it's, it's boring. Uh, it's definitely a slow burn of the slow burn variety. The first kill doesn't happen for a good half hour or so. Um, that, that particular argument, I think, doesn't bother me because I think the characters are... For instance, a film uh, a year ago, Bunny Man, uh, took about a good hour before things really got going, and they did character devel development, and I'm all for character development, but you can't do character development when the characters all suck. And that's what happened with Bunny Man, which is unfortunate because the last 20 minutes is amazing. This one, not as long a development as that film, and I think the characters are much better. The, the performances of the cast are, are overall pretty good. Um, some better than others. Again, I think Kyle was the most annoying, but you got to have an annoying character in a slasher film. Um, James' performance was good. Um, the lead, Brooke, was good. And um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a slow... They build up the character development, but I think they also... There's also um, an atmosphere development, which I like. It's it, You see the south and the trees and the... You know, just the atmosphere around it is really cool and it brought me back to a 70s, 80s type vibe to it, which I think they succeeded really well. The other one is that I think people have a problem with would be the lack of gore. It's not a gory film, which is very odd because they actually got the almost human effects team, which is Robert Hall, uh, Robert Hall's great effects company, Robert Hall, of course, director of the fan, uh, film I love, Lay to Rest, Lay to Rest 1 and 2. If you've seen those films, you know, regardless of what you think about it, you can't, um, you got to admit that the effects are fantastic. So, in, in getting him, you would think that there's, this would just be a gore fest, which, and it's not, which leads me to believe that either I have a completely, like, unrated, uh, or rated version of this, which I'm quite sure it's not, or there was completely deliberate, calculated move to have more of a subdued, um, laid-back atmosphere, much reminiscent more so of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film as opposed to, you know, I think it lends a film like that or a slash film like Just Before Dawn as opposed to a film like The Prowler, which is more of a gore fest. Um, it didn't bother me. I think it fit that vibe, the rest of the vibe of the film. It may bother all you gore hounds out there. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of good kills, though. It's more of just more blood. There is a very cool... Reminiscent of an eight old school 80s kill with a baseball bat, which I think looks really good. There's a scene where um, the killer kicks one of the uh, girl's legs and it fucks, makes, it breaks the bottom part of her leg, and it looks really, really good, really authentic looking. And uh, so there's still some gore, but it's just not what you'd expect maybe for a film like this. Let's get to the positives now of the film that I like. Completely badass killer, and that is this guy right here. It's the cover. It's a shame that they didn't use the the actual other cover art that I've seen, like posters of this film, which have like that kind of um, drawing collage, kind of like Hobo with Shotguns cover, Dear God No, that type of art, which is really cool. That old school 70s looking grindhouse collage. I don't know why they didn't use that for this release. Um, I don't know, it just baffles me. So there's just the standard cover of the killer. And there you go, the, the, the pig head mask. Awesome mask. mask very reminiscent. Um, reminds me of the, the mask in a great um, 80s film Motel Hell for that one scene where he wears the mask. Um, really looks cool and this is played by Nick Principe who played um, Chrome Skull in the Late to Rest, two mo Late to Rest movies. Big fan of him. Back when I saw, first heard about this movie like a year ago and I heard that Nick Principe was going to be playing um, you know, a killer, a slasher killer in a, in a pig face mask. I was so excited and um, his performance really stands out. A great killer. You always hear the term iconic used. Um, he did it so well in as Chrome Skull Lay to Rest 2. And, you know, it's not easy to do that. You don't have any dialogue. It's all body language and your behavior. And he really, um, he really has all, all the gravitas that you could hope for in, in a, a slasher killer, in a slasher film. 
I honestly just enjoyed watching him in scenes. Um, it's a lot of fun. He's the same um, demeanor as like back in the old days with the Friday the 13th films and Jason Voorhees and, and Michael Myers. Not to put it up there, but he has that same, that same screen presence that right when they came on the screen, you just were glued to him. And you, you, I just love watching him. There's some great scenes. His body language is awesome. And he actually, there's one scene in the woods um, where he starts, the only noises he makes, he starts kind of doing like a, I don't want to say a pig squeal, but like some strange like yelps and noises while he's killing one of them. And uh, kind of Leatherface, uh, an homage to Leatherface. And uh, he does it really well and it comes across as really creepy and awesome. And uh, yeah, he just does a superb job. Um, he's really talented in that way. And uh, there's... You know, one thing that I think is lost in, in a lot of the current slasher films, um, it was done very well in Fritz Vilt, the Norwegian film, Cold Prey, which I love, um, Murder Loves Killers 2, which I always bring up, is that stalk and slash element. Um, there's a couple scenes like that in here, one in particular is shown right there on the back cover, where the two girls are trying to hide behind some trees in the woods, and he's kind of looking around for them, and he creeps up behind this tree. Um, shot, shot really well. Um, Eric England, I think, has the... Um, the nuances and the the intangibles that you want to see in a in a young filmmaker that hopefully he can nourish in his future films. Um, you can just tell the way with his angles. Um, just really well done for a very low low budget uh, film. It um and almost honestly like the quality. I believe they used that red camera. It almost looks kind of too good uh, as far as the camera, the quality of the camera. I almost would have liked a more grainy look to it, which would have added to the that I think late 70s, early 80s, probably was going for. Again, to me, some of these throwback uh, films, you can either look at them as a, uh, you know, a, sh a shitty ripoff or an uh, honorable homage, and I look at it as the latter. I really think this is a, a good homage to, the, a te again, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre type film. More reserved, more atmospheric, uh, more laid back, has that, a lot of great vibe to it, and um, and really, it's one of those films, it, the characters, um, the young college students, um, like I said, they're likable, but I think what's cool about this in a slash film, you want to either like, you want to either like the, the good the good side, or you want to like the killers, or the killer. And um, in this case, I like the, the college students, but I think I like even more the, you know, the southern, the locals, you know, and besides uh, Damien Ewell, there's particular person that stands out. She was the old woman who I told you about was in the diner, is the manager of the diner. Again, a delightful woman. Her performance is absolutely fantastic. Um, she's creepy. She's funny. Um, just a fantastic performance by her. Really standout performance. And you begin, as the film progresses, you begin to learn what her role is on the whole, the whole story. And she, of course, ends up with a very prominent role and a very prominent scene towards the end of the film. There will be a second film, which I'm happy about. I hope some any of the... Um, you know, he's getting his footing as director, and I think this is a very solid debut. Again, it has its faults. Um, dialogue here and there is a little bit sketchy, which you ex expect. But if you're a really big gore hound, you might be disappointed in this. Um, in fact, you probably will be disappointed in this. But um, again, there's some, still some good kills. Again, it's more heavy on atmosphere and vibe. Like, uh, I think Just Before Dawn is a perfect example. Not as good, of course. But you get a lot of vibe from the, the surroundings and the trees and the just that southern that southern style and atmosphere. Um, fantastic performance by Nick Principe. Overall, I think a good debut, a solid slasher film. Love that pig mask. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the sequel, I really am. But I, I just hope he doesn't, I hope he keeps that same atmosphere and doesn't um, appease some of the critics, uh, much like Tom Six did with The Human Centipede. You know, he got flack for it not being gory enough, and he came back and trying to make it more sick. I don't, I don't think filmmaking should be reactionary um, to, to your critics. Really highly recommend this guy's Madison County. Um, ultimately, with these throwback, intentional throwback slashers, I think a litmus test is, uh, do you get the feel that it takes you back to the 70s and 80s and, you know, imagine seeing it on a big uh, drive-in screen? And um, I definitely get that vibe with this. I could totally see this film playing back then, being a successful slasher. Um, I would love to watch this film on my buddy's 12-foot um, outdoor screen outside during the summer. Fantastic vibe in that way. Check out Madison County if you like a slasher with a cool killer. Um, again, I really respect Eric England for how he, um, how he took this film and, and portrayed it and did it in a very throwback, 
um, subtle, uh, atmospheric way. Madison County. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll have another review for you soon, actually, and, uh, of course, another episode of Horrors Ball, hopefully sometime in July, with a lot going on in July, uh, another convention coming up, of course, a big horror show I was telling you guys about with my band. So a lot coming up, hopefully I can get a new episode in sometime in July at some point, but again, I got another review coming up for you shortly. So, for the horror happy hour, for Horrors Ball, I'm the Headbanger. We'll see you next time. I'm out of here.